Hey everybody, it's Scott Fortunoff here, and tonight I'm going to work with you on the Semester with Scott, a new program that we have coming to you from Jaftex Corporation. Uh, this is the first of eight classes, and you could watch my Facebook page at Jaftex President for the schedule of when the classes will be. Why don't we jump right into today's subject? Today we're going to do a broad overview and um, of the design process when we design a fabric collection. So uh, this will be an expansion of my September 28th blog post on scottfortunoff.com, www.scottfortunoff.com. By the way, you are expected to read my blogs at scottfortunoff.com and also follow my Facebook page at Jeff Tech's President because all that material is fair game for the final exam. So let's get right into it. The lead stylist is the gatekeeper and that is probably the most important person in the design process. Uh, that lead stylist seeks inspiration. Uh, maybe she's reading the magazine over the weekend and sees a great new design on um, a, a model or a pair of shoes or a piece of art or just a beautiful photograph or something that inspires her to develop a, an entire uh, quilting collection around this concept. Uh, that lead stylist also she works with outside designers so we have licensed designers for example uh, Kim Deal or Pepper Corey or Sandra Mag Salmon or Kafe or K Facet or Tula Pink and people like that and we have licensing arrangements with them where we have a contract. Um, and then there are also people that are contacting us all the time, uh, people who say I want to submit art and I say send it over. But what I want to tell those people who want to submit art is submit your best stuff because we have our own people here who could do the simple things like the dots and the checks and the stripes. I don't need to pay someone a royalty or a commission to um, do that. So in addition, um, we buy art. So we have studios that come to our office with big trunks of art and it could be fabric or it could just be on paper. Uh, but here are a few things that I pulled out from our stash. And what we'll do is the designer will take this design and tweak it and change the colors. And this could be a whole collection could be built around this. So that's one item. Here we have a winter scene. This one was actually made into a line. This was, I believe, in Studio E fabrics, but you can pull out the dog and the plaid and the little red barn, the cardinal, and there's so much to work with here. And that's how a design collection is born. Even just a, a, a dot or a stripe. And something like this might be used for a 108 collection, a 108 inch wide collection, which we, um, which a consumer would use for quilt backing. And this would be done in, you know, maybe six or eight different colors. And then you have something like this where you could pull out the roses and pull out the little plaids and just make a full collection around this or at least the start of a collection um, and we could find other things to use around. But we need that wow. So this is neat too. You have a lot of things going on here. You have the bar and the fence, the, the um, sled, so many different little things to work with. And the last one I want to leave with you is this one. Look at all that is on here. So you have the Eiffel Tower, you have the little boat, you have beautiful flowers, a bridge. There's just so much to work with and we could do multiple colors and change it up. Um, but this is how a, a design collection is made. So what, how else do we make collections? Um, we buy people's uh, like their samples. So for example, when we bought Free Spirit, someone had a whole stash of her art from way back with fabric samples and we bought that. And that's something that we could develop further and make different collections. Uh, we, we also work with licensing agents. So there are lots of agents around in the industry and they'll call us up and they'll say, hey, I have this new person and she's doing mugs and wrapping paper and, and t-shirts and she's interested in designing fabric. So that would be a perfect example. So that person, we would sign them up with a licensing agreement and the agent would get some percentage of royalty as would the designer. So there are lots of different ways to um, make designs and um, make fabric collections. Um, we also have our own CAD operators. So these are computer aided, uh, they use computer aided design machines, but they're CAD operators. And these are like the worker bees to me. They help the designers, they clean up the design. So if the lines are, are not straight, they'll make them straight and make the little corrections. You know, it's, it's like an author, if someone's writing, it's like an editor, they'll edit all, all the parts out that need to be fixed. And that's what the CAD operators do. And we have lots of them, as I mentioned, that's why we really need, if you're gonna submit art for um, consideration, it needs to be wow, we need to say, wow, that is awesome. We can't get that elsewhere. Our team in-house cannot make that design on their own. 
Um, we also work with project designers. So uh, there's one company in particular that comes to mind, the Whimsical Wor Workshop, and that's uh, Heidi Pridemore's company. And she helps us design projects for all the collections that we make. We want to have inspiration. People get home from work and they're tired and they don't want to think. So we want to make it really simple for them. We want to give them something to spoon, you know, spoon feed them an idea that they can make something beautiful by just following the instructions. So on every what for all of the companies that we have, which include Studio E, Blank Quilting, Henry Glass, Free Spirit, Three Wishes, uh, all of our companies, we offer um, free projects because we want to help our customers, our shop owner customers, sell more fabric and help them promote our lines. And this is a great way to do that. And if you're interested, all of these projects, free projects can be found on all of our different company websites and there's they're a great source or a great resource and you could use them for any line it doesn't have to be for the specific line but we pay for them and they're for the public domain so anyone could use them and we really want you to use them so let me show you some examples of some different design motifs that we um, work with as we're going um, so first off simple one this is not really a motif but we work with solids so we have lots of different solids this is a free spirit card of different solids and those, a lot of people use solids. So then we have blenders. So this is a line called Melange, and it looks like a solid almost, but it's very subtle, really very subtle, um, but it does have some texture in it, and it does have a really nice feel, and it does allow for that quiet space on a quilt, because you can't, everything on your quilt can't be a wow, it would, it would just be too overwhelming for the eyes. Here's another one, this is a Henry Glass slide. This one is called a Folio Basics, and it's just a little vine design, which we do in a lot of different colors. And we promote it out with a lot of different collections when we make the sample cards. We add this on a lot of the lines, so when the sales reps go out, they could say, oh, this little vine right here works perfectly with this line, if you like it. And then we have more solids. These are kind of solids. These are shot cottons. Uh, these are by Peppercore. This is when the warp and the weft, the fabric in this direction and this direction are different colors. And it, it creates a solid effect, but it's not solid exactly. So that's another design. Then we have another little blender. This is like the Melange, just very subtle, but it's not a solid. It's called Urban Legend by Tana Mueller of Western Denim and Dirt. Then we have little swirls. This is just color by Studio E. And then we have things like homespun. So this is from A.E. Nathan. They have homespun. These are checks, solids, and plaids. And then there's fleece, little novelty designs. This is anti-pill fleece with cute designs on it. And then there's stripes, lots of different stripes. And then we have this little seersucker, little seersucker design with a pucker. And I found this here from 2007. This is a Henry Glass lot. This is from Brittany Dive, which is a little ditzy motif. Um, little calico or little perennial as we used to call them and then of course there are batiks and this is neat it's uh if you've ever seen the video it's a very neat process where they put the wax on the fabric and then they dye it and then they get the wax off and it creates a really cool um really cool design and then here's another piece of fleece this one is minky it's really nice and soft but just a cute little design this is a novelty design and something else we do, we've done a lot more of lately, is we've done a lot more glow-in-the-dark. These are really fun. This is great for the kids. Uh, when I visit a lot of quilt shops, I find that a lot of them have this in the bathroom. So when you turn the light off, it glows in the dark. That's fun. And I play with this with my kids. We throw it around the room and see, uh, and try to find all the fabric. It's fun. Then you have nature prints. So we have this little tree print. This is a knock on wood uh, by Blank Quilting. And then we have some digital designs. And... Digital designs, we do, we make designs digitally because they have a lot of colors. Our traditional um, flatbed printing and roller printing only allows for 18 colors. After you get to 18 colors, if you can't reduce it down, you need to go digital. Believe it or not, this you would never think this is so many colors, but when you look closely at it, you could see there's so many different shades in there. Um, and this might not have been more than 18, but maybe the rest of the SKUs in the group, uh, this was a 108 collection, maybe the other colors are required more than 18 colors. Then we have walls. This was a line by a former designer, uh, Stacy West, Buttermilk Basin. That's something we do. We have 30 prints. So this is Naname 3. This is the third iteration of this line. And these are, you know, reproduction. Those are very popular. We don't do as much of that. Some other companies are more known for that than we are. Then we have brush flannels. These are checks and plaids. Uh, these are a lot of fun, uh, but different designs. 
And then we have engineered prints. So an engineered print is, you know, just not a traditional repeat of like a dot that keeps repeating over and over. Uh, this is a book panel. So this is a 36 inch panel and everything here, if you buy this at a store, you could make a book like this. I don't think this, these don't match, but this is the book that you could make and everything is right here on the one yard cut. Uh, our panels vary in size from uh, most are either 36, which is a yard or 24 inches um, or some are once in a while they're 30 inches, but not so often. Then we have metallics. So metallics are a lot of fun. They, they just bring out a little bling in your designs. And then I was searching in the back and I found this one. This is really cool. This is an old Henry Glass one, but this is like a patchwork. And this is from Buggy Barn. This is must be from the late 90s. This is cool, so nice patchwork. And then we have Pigment White on White, which is a little paste that they put on the fabric. These are great to create some rest in your quilts. Again, you can't have a quilt be filled with, you know, wild images and things that are making your eyes go crazy, so you do need the rest. And then there's skins. We have this little um, black and white skin, uh, geometrics. Look at this great geometric little wave. And then paisleys and more little vines and florals. So after we have all the designs and we figure out the collection, we decide if it needs tr to be traditionally printed or digitally printed. Again, if it's digitally printed, it means it has 18 colors or more. If it's traditionally printed, our flatbed or roller um, or roller printing, it is less than, it's 18 colors or less. Um, after the designing, we have we put the color cards together and we release the collection. So these the release means that we go out to start selling the collections when the color cards are made and the lines are presented to the customers for sales. Uh, in a future class, I will discuss the color card process, but I did want to tell you that we go out with, our companies go out with new collections either four or five times a year. Henry Glass is the only company that goes out with new lines five times. They have a March release. All the other companies ship lines and uh, go out with new collections or release new collections in January, May, which is usually a quilt market, July, and October, which is also a quilt market. Then when we're finally ready to ship the orders, we roll them out. That's called a rollout, when the lines finally ship to the stores and they go for, to the shops to be purchased by you or all the consumers out there. So um, that's all I have for you today on designing fabrics. This is the first course in Semester by Scott, uh, by me, Scott Fortunoff. I hope you enjoyed the first class. Please make sure to write questions uh, in the comment sections. I will be sure to answer all those questions. And I'll make, make sure to come back next week, uh, October 21st at 7.45 Eastern Time for the next class. And outside of that, class is dismissed. Thanks for being here. Take care. I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.